name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. In our last Bible study, we learned in the 24th chapter of several things that have to transpire before Jesus returns to gather his own to the safety of heaven. And then around the end, he started putting the emphasis on being prepared for his return. And so today we're going to go straight into the 25th chapter of the great book of Matthew. And Christ is going to continue to teach the importance of being ready. Because we know not the day or hour when he will come for us. Okay, let's dive straight into this 25th chapter with the first verse. Jesus says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened or compared to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom is simply the groom. Okay? He says in verse 2, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Verse 3, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. 5. While the bridegroom tarried, which means he delayed, he didn't come right away, they all slumbered and slept. 6. And at Midnight, there came a, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. Five, six, seven. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Eight. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Nine. But the wise answered saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So the wise ones say, we don't have enough oil to give to y'all, because then we won't have enough. So go to the store and get you some. Ten. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, or the groom came. And they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Now, I want you to pay attention to these next couple of verses. 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. 12. But he answered and said, Truly, I say to you, I know you not. 13. Watch. Therefore, Jesus says, for you know neither the day nor hour in which the Son of Man comes. So he did this to put the emphasis on the importance of being ready. You and I ought to stay in a state of preparedness because we don't know when our life is going to end. And we don't know exactly when Christ is going to show up, even though he has given us certain signs that have to be fulfilled before he comes. We still don't know the exact day or hour. Okay? He goes into another parable. Matthew 25 verse 14. He says 
For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered to them his goods. Uh, that was 1415. And to one he gave five talents. Now remember talents is an a measurement of money. We're not talking about talent like the ability to dance or sing or play guitar. Okay? So he gave to one five little measurements of money, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. So he gave every last one of his servants some money to invest while he was gone for him. Okay? Sixteen. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded it with the same and made them other five talents. Uh, that was 16, 17. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. 18. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants, he came and reckoned with them. Uh, 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Behold, I gained besides them five talents. More. 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter you into the joy of your Lord. 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter you into the joy of your Lord. 24. <laughs> Think of that lazy bum. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, where you haven't scattered no seeds, and gathering where you have not strawed. 25. And I was afraid and went and hit your talent or hit your money in the earth. Behold, there you have that. There you have that is yours. <laughs> 26. This Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I sowed not or where I didn't scatter seed and gather where I have not straw. 27. You ought to therefore have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. You should have put it in the bank, in other words, and then let it gain a little interest. Put it in a savings account. 28. He says, take therefore the talent from him. Take that money from him. And give it to him that has ten talents. Give it to the guy who gained me five more talents. 29. For to everyone that has shall be given. Listen. And he shall have an abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. 30. And cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now I want you to get the significance of this parable. Christ has given us all something to do and we better very well be doing it. Because if we don't, we're going to be in a world of hurt when he comes. That's right. That's what he's teaching there. The ones who do what the Lord told them to do are going to be ruling with him in the kingdom over cities. And the ones who didn't, they're going to end up in the lake of fire. So you better pray to God to help you understand what it is that he wants you to do, and you better be about your father's business. Uh, Jesus says in verse 31, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. 32. 
and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left hand, the left. 34. Then shall the king say to them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 30, 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat, or you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. 36. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Uh, 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we you hungry and fed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? 38. When saw we you a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed you? 39. Or when saw we you sick or in prison? And came to you. Listen, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say to them, Truly, I say to you, Inasmuch as you have done it to one of the least of these my brethren, You have done it to me. Now I want you to get this. Because the Lord wants us to love not just in word, but in deed. All right? You know, there's a lot of so-called Christians talking about, I love my brothers in Christ, but won't lift a finger to do anything to help them. Mm -mm. He wants us to love in deed, in, the, in what we do for each other, okay? So he gives you a whole lot of things here that we're supposed to do for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you do, you're going to receive a reward for doing that. Now, 41. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. 42. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. You didn't give me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. 43. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. 44. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we you hungry, or thirst, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? When did this happen, Lord? <laughs> 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Truly, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. You see that, saints? 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So you want to be sure, brothers and sisters, that you truly love your brothers and sisters in Christ the way the Lord says you're supposed to love them. Not just saying, I love them, or I'll pray for them. That's, that's good. You, you said you love them, you pray for them, but you got to be willing to share whatever God has blessed you with, with them in their time of need. You should be concerned about them. You should be praying for them. If you know they're sick, you should go visit them. These are the things that God wants us to do. Now, he doesn't mean that you and I got to try to do that for every brother and sister in Christ we got on the planet, because that would be impossible. But the ones that live where you live, that you can get to, these are the ones you're supposed to be doing that for. And the ones on the other side of the world, you can pray for them. You can send money to them. There are things you can do long distance for the ones that don't live right in that city where you live. So I hope and pray that you understand this. Okay? Be sure not to, mix, not to miss the next Bible study when we go into the 26th chapter of the great book of Matthew. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of 
any amounts. This is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton 1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, Take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain, and God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store, and I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store, check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go, and you're also blessing this ministry as well. So... Until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and
Goodbye.